Well, as you know, uh, this Sunday is, yes, it's Father's Day. Father's Day, that most venerated of all holidays, Father's Day. I, you know, it is difficult to preach on holidays because people's expectations are so high. And Father's Day is no exception. The difficult thing with Father's Day is that uh, for the most part, it seems almost like it plays second fiddle to Mother's Day. Everybody gets hyped up about Mother's Day. Father's Day, eh, not so much. Pastor, you sound a little jealous. Well, no, I'm not jealous. It just seems like a made-up holiday that people don't really care about. Yes, yes, okay, I get it. Well, I love my daddy, and I'm going to give him a blanket. Okay, fine and dandy, and my children will give me a gift as well. It just seems difficult. Now, the hard thing about it is, um, if we are looking for biblical examples, good biblical examples of fatherhood in Scripture, they're hard to come by. Most of the fathers that are portrayed in Scripture don't do a very good job of being a father. Other than uh, the parable of the... Uh, the father that Jesus tells of the prodigal son, uh, and other than Joseph, who is a stepfather, and we can, we will talk about Joseph before this is over with, uh, and God the father, and, you know, things for fathers to do, but as far as examples of being good fathers, there's just not a whole lot of them. Having said that, we are going to look this week briefly at biblical fathers, good and bad. We're going to look at some who did good things, some who did bad things. All of them stumble and fall just like every human father does. Every human father stumbles and falls and messes up in some kind of way. Uh, none of us are perfect, uh, and certainly these biblical characters are not perfect. And while we're on the subject, that's one of the things that I like about the Bible is that it doesn't portray them as perfect. Uh, it gives you their picture uh, warts and all, so to speak, uh, the good and the bad, and um, presents them as human beings. And that's one of the things that in, uh, inspires me to believe that the Scripture is true. Or, to put it another way, it gives, it lends Scripture that ring of truth that you would expect to find in something that is true. So as we look at fathers, and we're going to look at a different one each day leading up to uh, our Father's Day message on Sunday. The first father that we're going to look at is Abraham, or Abram as he was called at this time. Now, the thing that I want to point out about Abram, or if you prefer, Abraham, uh, is that here's a man who has been obedient to God. He left his ancestral home, left his family, took his wife, and nephew, and father, and marked time in Paran until his father passed away, and then the program for him went on track again. Some would argue that the reason he had to mark time in Paran is because he took his dad with him, and God didn't tell him to do that. God told him to leave all of his family. Well, he didn't do that. Well, he still didn't. He took a lot with him, and I can understand that at any rate. They had no children. Abram and Sarah had no children. Now, you must understand, in this time in history, not to have children was considered to be cursed by God. Uh, children were seen as a blessing of God, especially sons. Like it or not, like it or not, sons were considered a, a, a special blessing of God. Um, and... This is a couple who were childless. And God had promised Abraham, you will have descendants that you can't count. They'll be as numerous as the stars in the sky, as the sands on the shore. Um, and Abraham's getting older, and he's wondering how this is going to happen. And he's been praying and praying and praying that God would give him a, a son and talking to God where is this descendants? Where is all this going to be? And, uh, and in chapter 15 of 
the book of Genesis, you have this interesting event that takes place between Abram and, um, and God, or Yahweh, if you prefer. And uh, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not fear, Abram, I am a shield to you. Your reward shall be very great. And Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me since I am childless? And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Since you have given no offspring to me, one born in my house is my heir. Can you hear the heartache in him? Can you hear the, he is broken over this. Here I am, I'm getting older um, it doesn't look like, God, I've trusted you, I have followed you, I have left everything to be obedient to you, and I still don't have any children. And he's asked for children, and he's asked for children, and he's asked for children, and, and no children have come. Now, I don't know if you have been in that position, but I've been in the position of counseling people who, who want to have children and they can't have children, and the heartbreak and the, the self-blame that comes with that. Did I do something wrong? Have I offended God? Have I done something to make God angry with me? Is there something in my past that, you know, all of these kind of questions that come up. Um, and this is the same thing that's going on with Abraham. And God assures him, nope, no, it won't be that. And God took him outside and, uh, then behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this man will not be your heir, this high ranking servant will not be your heir, but one who will come forth from your own body, he shall be your heir. And he took him outside and said, now look toward the heavens and count the stars if you are able to count them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. Then he believed in the Lord and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the, of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess it. He said, O Lord God, how may I know that I will possess it? So he said to him, bring me a three-year-old heifer and a three-year-old female goat and a three-year-old ram and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these to him and cut them in two, laid each half opposite the other, but he did not cut the birds. The birds of prey came down upon the carcasses, and Abraham drove them away. And, of course, what happens through that is Abraham has this vision uh, of God moving between the pieces, the, the fire pot and the smoking fire pot and all of that. And we could spend a lot of time on that. But the only point that I wanted to make with this is Abraham as a father is one that he prayed to have a child. He wanted a child. He desired a child. And I think that's the first and foremost thing. If you're going to be a godly father, if you to be uh, the, the father that God wants you to be, is that you must want to have children. You must desire to have children. Because to have children is to sacrifice. There, it's a requirement of a sacrifice. Your life will never be the same, and, and you will be sacrificing for those children for the rest of your life. That's part of it. And then as you move further into Abraham's life, where Abraham does have uh, Isaac, who is the child of promise, and he takes this child in obedience to God, and he is going to offer him as a sacrifice. He does not withhold his child, believing that God would bring him back even from the dead to fulfill his promise. That's how much he trusts in God. So two things I would point out about Abraham as a father. One, he desired to have children. Two, he prayed to have children. Three, he trusted God that God would provide the children. And then thirdly, he lived out a faithful, godly life in front of his children uh, for the rest of their lives. And I pray that you know that. Hey, listen, my time is up. 9.30 is our worship service this Sunday morning. Don't forget, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday on June 28th, we start small groups back up. Worship is at 9.30, small groups at 10.45, or whenever the preacher will be quiet, that's when they'll start, and, um, and we'll go from there. Also, don't forget, this Sunday morning, we're voting on those two proposals from Budget and Finance and the Deacons. One, the new flooring in the youth and children and preschool departments, and the live streaming equipment. 
Uh, I won't give you the prices on those. Uh, we already gave those out Sunday, uh, but we will be voting on that this Sunday morning. And uh, look forward to seeing you this Sunday. Until then, hey, please know God loves you. He is the perfect Heavenly Father. It's not that God looked down on fathers and said, I'm going to reveal myself as Father. Fatherhood as we know it takes its example from God who is Father uh, to all of us who are created in His image. And so I pray that you know that He loves you. This Heavenly Father loves you even beyond what an earthly father could love you. And that He gave His Son that you might have eternal life, forgiveness of sin, and joy indescribable right here and right now that he might have that wonderful eternal relationship with you, his child in Christ Jesus. I pray that you know that. Hey, listen, see you tomorrow.